Do you have what Quick on? impressions of the match. Well, I didn't think it was going to be as, um, as I can say, as easy for us as it was. I think um, <clears throat> Australian New Zealand games are always very tough, and they're, they're very pressurised. And what happened in the first half? We had the win. We kept it down there, and New Zealand, for some strange reason, didn't seem to have the rhythm or the, the, the fighting to get out there and, and attack our line. But a credit to our forwards. I mean, the forwards did all the work. They won all the line-out ball, and uh, Michael Lyon has kicking, kept us in the game all the time. In the second half, when they did try to run at you, in fact, you completely closed them out. Yeah, we, our defence has, uh, has been fantastic you know, all this year. I think there's been about three tries scored against us in about uh, eight, nine test matches. Um, against New Zealand, there's, they haven't scored a try in three tests in, in 12 months against us. So it's just a fantastic record. And we knew it was going to be very tough. And we knew if we were going to win the rugby games, you got to let, can't let the opposition score tries. Pinning it down to you just for a moment, every time you had the ball in your hand, you seemed to have all the time in the world to you know, figure out what your options were. Well, I think it's, uh, as I said, a credit to the forwards and then the backs, inside backs. If they give me room to move, I, I've got a few options up my sleeve. And, um, you know, I just want to give a lot of people a hard time because they call me a veteran at 29. So I just get out there and enjoy <laughs> myself. <laughs> Let me turn to Tony just for a moment. Um, you and I talked before the match about how sterile yesterday's match seemed to be. What would be the adjective you, you'd use for today's one? Well, the two tries scored in the first half perhaps would be magic. But, I mean, this guy's a genius. And the, to, to, to my mind, uh, the game again today, as it was last Sunday, was all about Campo. And I made the point in the commentary, Liam, that I'm delighted now he has the stage next week, a World Cup final. And I hope he doesn't retire. I hope David keeps on playing. He says he's going to. I think he's foolish. Let's uh, call in the gentleman in the studio, because I'm sure that uh, each and every one of you has probably questions or comments to make. Yes, um, uh, David, well done today. Mick Quinn here. Well, hi, Mick. How you doing, my boy? Not too bad. That was excellent today, and really uh, the thing that struck us here was, was the overall ability of the Australians to put their game across the All Blacks. The All Blacks, I've never seen them play as badly as today. Have you felt that yourself in the game? Well, um, I must say, for the, this year is the first time in 10 years we played uh, New Zealand and Australia. We beat them 21-12, and then we went to New Zealand two weeks later, and they beat us 6-3. And after that, leading up to the World Cup, it was the first time in 10 years I've ever said that we'll beat New Zealand this year because I just feel that um, they just seem to be going through the same, same routines all the time. They're doing the same moves, and we, and we know that. You know, when you play Australia New Zealand tests like three or four times every year, you get to know each other pretty well. So, you know, we just knew what they were going to do, and we had a few things up our sleeves, and I think we were more determined than they were. Well, I don't think they expected to see you come in at fly half there for the <laughs> first try, and uh, it was a beautiful try and great pace about it. Did you enjoy that one particularly? Oh, yes, I always enjoy uh, running off the back of the rucks because no one, especially being a winger, they expect you to be out there and, and be a very quiet guy and just get the ball and kick it out. But, you know, I enjoy, if I don't touch the ball, I don't enjoy my, my rugby, and uh, up to this date, I've been, like, enjoying it as, as much as ever because you can run onto the ball. The players, have got they support me and I support them and they know when I've got the ball that they, all they've got to do is follow me. And um, I was very lucky. I had the angle on John Kerwin and he didn't know whether they go out for, on his wing or, in, or try and tackle me and I just went for the gap and, and I was lucky I scored in the corner. David, uh, Mick Doyle, well done. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks Mick. Hope you beat England. <laughs> beat them well. I think it'd be good for uh, <laughs> world rugby if we beat England somehow. <laughs> Absolutely. Tell me, we, we were surprised here in the studio watching uh, at how easy... You dominated them morally or mentally from the kickoff. Yeah, I they think didn't that, seem to have any answers to, to, to anything you were doing. Yeah, I think uh, over the last couple of years, um, Australia New Zealand games, like we've been intimidated for some reason. But <clears throat> today, that we knew that if we got down there, because New Zealand always start strong for the first 20 minutes, they always try and score a try and they try and dominate the first 20. And we knew if we can get down there half, keep them there, their game, their tactics will be sort of disrupted. And you know, as I said, a credit, we had the win with us, a credit to our forwards. And Michael Lyon, Nick Far Jones, all we did was put the ball in behind them and put the pressure on and, and some and we were very lucky that it worked in the first twenty, thirty minutes. Were you happy that, that Kieran Crowley was picked at full back? Well I don't think I think he's a great player. I mean Kieran goes back when I first started back in eighty two and um, he's a great player, but I think it's very hard when you've got a, a twenty six man squad and you, you train right through five or six weeks and you come to a vital game and you, you've got to change uh, Terry Wright for for Crowley. Terry Wright's a great player, so is Crowley you not know, Whoever the All Blacks put on the on the field, they're a great 15, and there's um, you know we were lucky that today he didn't probably play as as best as best as he can play, but again you know it was a credit to us we just put the ball where he wasn't. Sure, sure, yeah, super, great win. Thank you. Great game. Bill O'Hurley here in the studio, David. Again, I add my congratulations. Thank you. You made a point actually about the predictability of uh, New Zealand's game today. England are also a very predictable team. Is that going to make it easier for you on Saturday? No, I don't think. I think you know when you got England, you know they're, they're playing very well. We played them this summer and we beat them fairly easily. And um, I can remember back in '88 
England came to Australia for two test matches and we, we, we beat them uh, fairly easy in Australia. We came to England and they beat us. Mm. So we've just got to worry about going out there, playing our game. But I think what's most important is, for me, especially is the World Cup, you've got the phone, you've got the world watching. So hopefully that um, we can have a bit of run in rugby like we did today. I watched yesterday's game. Obviously England won. They're very happy to win. But you know, you've got to look at the, the people out there who pay a lot of money to come and watch the game and, and there's no try scored. I think rugby for me is the score tries, not kick goals. But you know, the way mm. I think is, is very strange, and uh, I think Serge Blanco thinks the same way as I do, and Mark Eller. But there's not many other people out there that think you've got to score tries. They think you've got to drop goals and, and kick the penalty goals. Nick Farr-Jones was making the point about you that you're very much a confidence player and that you like playing in the Northern Hemisphere because people appreciate you. Does it lift your game? Yeah, I think over here, the, the thing that I like about over here is that nobody's expecting anything of you. You play the game, and if you do something wrong, who cares? You know? And if, if you do, do play well, I mean, that's great. It, obviously, it's a team effort. But in Australia, there's so much, every time I get the ball, you can hear the crowd. They want me to do something all the time. And it's just impossible, and the opposition know that, so they try and corner me. But again, today, I mean, like, it was just one of those things where you get the right angle, you get on the run, and you're really keen to get in the game. You really want to touch the ball, and you want to show people how good you can play and what things you can do. I think there's a lot of rugby players out there that are great, great rugby players, but they haven't been given the opportunity because the game tactics are just kick the ball down there, let's just win, you know, who cares, just let's win the game. And I don't know how they can enjoy it. One Do final question. Who, can um, I ask one final question, Liam? Sure, Ben. Whose is the lipstick? <laughs> <laughs> Never you mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd just like to ask one final question as well, and it's this. I mean, we are now nowhere in the World Cup. You're in the final. And I'm just wondering what kind of a perspective today's performance, Australia against New Zealand, New Zealand against Australia, and Ireland against Australia last week with just a one-point difference at the very end. Well, I think um, the biggest thing was that last week that we sort of, we didn't know what the, we, to expect from the Irish side. We knew that they were a good team and we knew that they'd never give up. So we went out there in the front row, kept on saying, well, we've never played against, we didn't know what tactics they were going to use. Australia and New Zealand, we play against them all the time. They know us, we know them. And um, it's very strange when you got the crowd behind you last week at Ireland, you could just sense that they were waiting for something to happen. And when they did score, it was like an explosion. And then three minutes later when we scored, it was silence. And today to have half the crowd sort of for New Zealand, half for Australia, I reckon that was fantastic because there wasn't... Sorry. Sorry, well, I don't know what's happening here. Yeah, fine, OK. Well, Alas, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Sorry, Alas. Congratulations to thank you. Thank you. And Tony Ward, a last comment from you. Well, I, I'm delighted Australia are in the final. We were talking, um, one point I made yesterday was I was dreading a, a, a replay in many ways of New Zealand, England again. Mm -hmm. It hasn't materialised. Yesterday's game, as you said earlier, was absolutely dreadful. I think Australia at the moment are the best team in world rugby and they play a beautiful brand of rugby and I, for one, am looking forward keenly to next week's game. And I think it goes without saying we all hope that they will win the World Cup. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tony. Tony, yeah, Tony Ward. Yeah, I just just like to make one comment. You remember early on in, the, in this tour competition, we've been talking about the gain line. Yeah. Uh, it looked to us here that that New Zealand rarely got beyond the gain line every time they got the ball. Hardly ever, Mick. It was incredible. And I mean, so much so. You know, Australia used the drift defence, right. but yeah. really, New Zealand were going absolutely nowhere. They were just running across the field, and in the end, they, they they relied so much on just kicking the ball up in the air and hoping for the best. But they looked a beaten team, Mick. I remember I was making the point to you that yeah. you know it's, it's often different when you're sitting in the studio, um, and it, it, it's something somewhat different when you're in the ground. There was a sense all through that second half that at no stage were New Zealand actually going to penetrate the Australian defence and uh, make the way down to the line. Right, they just went through the motions and Timu hadn't a, hadn't a prayer to get, no, a, get well, over that line. No, Campos psyched him out of it. I mean, right. very much so. I mean, we, we all know about his attacking play, but his defensive play and his angles of defence in the second half, he really didn't know where he was going. The only time they looked dangerous at all was when John Kirwan came across and was taking the ball in the out-half position, really, or um, occasionally Craig Innes when he was throwing a few shapes in the middle of the field. But they were really, ro they were going nowhere today. But the Aussies are looking for tackles. Oh, very much so. I thought their tackling around the fringe of Rook and Maul throughout the game was absolutely superb. And in the key areas, Mick, I mean, both uh, Little and Horan in the middle of the field really got physically involved today. Right. And often Gowie and Kearns, and they all tackled. It was a terrific team performance. Right. Super. Great stuff. Thanks, Tony. All right, Tony, thank you very much indeed. And thank you indeed, uh, Liam Nolan and David Campesi. And let's actually celebrate uh, the great play of Campesi. You know, and watch his, uh, the way he made the try and scored the try. Well, the, the first try... It was a real beauty. It was a lovely ball to the back of the line out. And Lina makes a half cut here and sets the ball down beautifully for his forwards coming in. And when the ball comes out, there's Campesi. Sees the gap, sees a couple of forwards hanging around and then leaves Kerwin uh, in two minds, really. He didn't know whether to stay outside or come in. 
It's really well done. If we hold the ball there, if we hold it there actually, we can just see we've got a couple of forwards hanging off here. And really, Campese is just about to see that there's plenty of space outside. And as we move the, the film on, we can see where he spots it. And there's Kerwin. Hold it now. Kerwin now had turned inside, saw the Campese was going outside and turns back outside again. But look, there are guys here all, all the way outside. Campese could have used any of them if he felt that he wasn't going to make the line. But as we move on, we know he knows that his momentum is going to take him there anyway. What a player. He read it perfectly. Yeah, great play. But the uh, New Zealanders really, <laughs> that was a great catch. I mean, that, that was, we asked for that piece of film there just to show the, the ability of Campese. I mean, he's a 70-yard kick there, but his ability just to catch a ball going backwards as if it didn't matter, and he just does it as if it was just a piece of cake. And this is the great second try. Uh, lovely chip over the top uh, from, from uh, Michael Lina, and Campese leaves them in two minds, really, and Horn goes trundling over for his try. I think he got cut at that stage. I think that's where he, he got it. That was an extraordinary stitches. pass by Campese too, wasn't it? Yeah. That, that was the brilliant thing, really. But Lina's Lina's placing of that ball and his perception... Hold it there, you hold there. the film there, you can actually see where, where Campese shaped to go outside and Timu obviously was looking outside but then he just cut back in and he's already got a lead on him there and as the film moves on you'll see he gets a lucky bounce here actually, Crowley was a little bit unfortunate but he takes his chance and moves on and now he's going to really tease Timu, he's going to move him out, he's going to move him in and then flicks that beautiful pass over his shoulder to Horn and Horn's a strong boy. And he's going to he's going to get a few yards in there. He drew two, def three defenders. He did uh, with that move. But a sheer class, a beautiful pass yeah. over his shoulder. Beautiful. The interesting the interesting thing about him, though, listening to him talk, is that his concept of rugby is is entirely different, isn't it? The kind of yeah. sterile, yeah. win at all cost, boring rugby that we would have seen, say, from England yesterday. He's, he's totally positive. He realises that the people pay money mm. to go and see a match. They don't want to see chess. And he's a guy who gets a ball in his hands. He knows he has ability. He's got the the brain to think positively. What can I do with the ball? Not, what can I not do with the ball? You know, where do I hide it? Whatever. He wants to go forward. He wants to run with it. He wants to make something out of it. He's always trying. And the support is always there for him because he's always trying. OK, uh, also, to, really today positive. was an extremely good, uh, comprehensive performance. And one of those who played very well, I think it's fair to say, was Lina. Uh, yeah. He varied the game a lot. And there's an example here, actually, of his work. Yeah, he, he, he did a lovely little kick across the field here. He spotted that Crowley was the last man there. In fact, Kerwin had come in to take the second last man. And if they got a lucky bounce there now, they could have been in for a try. Uh, it was just a good, good reading of the game. I thought, I thought Lina dominated uh, Grant Fox today. I thought Grant Fox was out of form. In fact, when the, when the New Zealanders were training during the week, one of the big worries they had, I said this to you earlier, actually, the one, one of the big worries they had during the week was his lack of form during the World Cup. They've been very un unhappy about Grant Fox's form. Not his place kicking, but yeah. his form. Whereas the Australians are, are a bit worried about line of kicking, but not but his not form. But not his form, exactly, right, yeah. yeah. But yeah. talking about form, what has gone wrong with New Zealand? Let's have a look at an example of their play, Mick. And it seems to me that they were going nowhere for most of the game. No, they seem to be t catching up from, from the first minute. Uh, normally they would score from here nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten. But there was no composure from Kerman. There was a score there if he just held the ball and just popped it. He, he had the men, he'd drawn the men. Just proper pass. One simple pass, and uh, centre would have scored. He exploded the point that you made earlier on that he was as good as Campesi. He wasn't on today's performance. No, not at all. Not he was, he wasn't in the game. No, he tries hard, but he just he, his his whole timing is off. Uh, he's not his as good as Campesi. No. I mean, Campesi is she, he's the Pele of you know. I mean, Kerwin is a bull in a china shop, but a strong one and a good, talented player, but not in Campesi's class, really. New we, Zealanders are trying hard there, but the yeah. the Aussies' defence in, in the in the rocks. Right. That, that was a bit. That was a very decision. poor decision again by the that referee. It's good cover from Lina here. It's back, but the, the kick wasn't uh, wasn't one of the great ones, and it's picked up. And Another bad throw back pass by the up here again. Oh. Yeah. And the New Zealanders are starting to try and get the driving game going here. And the but, but New Zealand really didn't have much penetration. They had the kind of cutting edge of usual as usual. So they didn't. No, have, some of the passing was off. They had no. They had no drive from full-back. Crowley is too, too slow coming in the line. They missed Gallagher enormously. He's been the one huge loss to them. Yeah. And Crowley, you reckon, held a slow down their line? He did, yeah. I think pass, they were waiting for him to burst onto the ball, and he didn't. Uh, and he, he slowed them up. But that defence is magnificent by Australia, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's one thing to give them possession, but they denied him any, any uh, That's right. result of the possession. There are three or four guys around every New Zealander running there. Mm. Uh, 
They're big, all about him. The big, the big, last, the big last film you've seen we, was we there saw, with We saw Jones. one thing there, if I can hurry you on a little bit. We saw, we saw one example there of the referee's decision. How significant was the referee's performance there? Let's look at some of the decisions. They were a bit strange. I think he made some hairy ones. We just couldn't understand them. Uh, and, uh, you know, it has a, a serious effect on players when they're in, in positions where they can do something, you know, in attacking positions. Uh, and some of them really flummoxed us. Guys going in with the ball in their hands, OK? They expect to win the ball. Uh, they're going forward again. You just see them driving, driving on, driving on, right? They go to ground, OK? And he gives a penalty yeah, to, to Australia. It's purely I momentum. It's purely momentum. Anything that was in front of the ball is purely momentum. Again, they're moving the ball here. It's all deep time. all the time. They're moving the ball deeply. They're not, atta- they're not getting through. There's very little support, OK? They go, they go forward. They're driving. They're f- trying to keep their cool. Get enough bodies there. They drive on, driving on to win the ball. Yeah. No, the penalty. There again, no. That's a, that's a crazy, crazy, crazy decision. Crazy the Aussies decision. are lying on the deck, and these guys going forward, they fall over them. They're not. Yeah. They had the ball in their hands. They're not going. Overall, over the though, in about ten seconds, good for rugby. That result. Oh yeah, without a yeah. doubt. I mean, it'd be great for rugby if Australia win. Because they, they're the guys who are playing the open rugby. England haven't opened the ball They're the yet. imaginative, inventive team now, aren't they? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I am very disappointed in New Zealand and the way they didn't play and that the, they didn't show the traditional things I expected from them. I'm delighted for Australia. I'm delighted Australia won. They're a far better team than New Zealand. And again, I hope they hammer the living. Yeah, they're, they're living. <laughs> All right, we're going to leave it at that. More discussion tonight. The uh, highlights are on at 10.50. We leave it, though, with the scores of the game.